Uh, so what the third degree of virtualization says is I'm going to take every volume that I have and I'm going to stripe it across all the drives in the array. That means any volume, if you have 40 drives and there are seven drives, 40 times 100 is 4,000 IOPS a second that you can do. And so it, it's like, you know, when I walk through a doorway, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close sometimes, uh, bump my head up a lot. But it's like suddenly walking through doorways that are all 18 foot tall. If I, have a, if I invite Shaquille O'Neal over to, to my dinner or something, or he's going to be able to get in there without bumping his head. And that's what you want. By using the performance of all the drives collectively for each volume, you eliminate all the next with any volume. Now, it's still true that if all the volumes go nuts all at once, right, and you need more than 4,000 items a second, you're not going to get them. And, and so then you need to add more drive to that array. So that's the, uh, that's the concept of the third degree. So we'll talk about disk array performance factors. And the number one factor, in my experience, has always been the number of drives. How many drives work, are, do you have working for you? Rarely is storage about how many megabytes per second can you pump in and out. It's rarely about the size of the pipe. It's almost always about items. How many IOs per second can you can you generate? A given drive, disregarding cache, can only do a certain number of IOs per second. Physical, a physical limitation can only do so much. So if you need to do a lot, you need to cascade a bunch of drives and get them involved in things. So that's the number one thing. Number two factor is the speed of the drives. Generally speaking, the most important of those factors is the revolutions per minute. How fast is that drive spin? SATA drives run at either 5400 RPM or more commonly these days at 7200 RPM. SAS drives or fiber channel drives usually run at 10,000 RPM or 15,000 RPM. And, and what happens is the slower the drive runs, the less power it draws. And the more uh, bytes you can get on that drive, the larger the capacity. So with the high-speed drives, they're also high-speed, high-expensive, both be the lower, lower cost. And so uh, if you get a lot of speed, but it costs you a lot of money, and it draws a lot more power, and generates a lot more heat, uh, and uh, with the 15,000 RPM drives. And so what you want to do is put your data on the lowest tier drives possible. So it's more, more efficient. And if your data isn't used a whole lot, it really ought to be um, slower drives. If it's used all the time, it ought to be up on faster drives. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the amount of cache on the drive, in these days drives have 32 meg cache or whatever, that helps that drive do a little more than the number of IOs per second that it can physically do. But if you're doing tons of reads and writes to it, that cache will get filled, filled and then it won't, uh, won't be helpful. Also very important is the seek time of the drive. And so if you imagine the arc of a disk drive, so this is the arc of a disk drive. When you're, there's a disk head out here, and it moves around from track to track on the drive and then waits for the, for the data to pass under the head. And it takes a little bit of time, three seconds, five milliseconds, whatever, to move track to track. Now if you have to jump from here to here, that'll take longer. So there's an average seek time. And that's a very important factor in drives. And more expensive enterprise class drives will generally have lower seat times, and, and they will, uh, and that will help you out a lot. The number three factor is the rate time, and sometimes that's number two. Uh, the uh, if you have a mirrored pair of drives, rate one, you're going to get the performance, re-performance of two drives, the rate performance of one drive. You have to rate to it twice. In the rate five. Uh, you take, say, you take the, the three drive array that we were talking about before. You get two drives worth of capacity and one drive worth of parity for redundancy, and so you get maybe 300 IOPS a second uh, in that uh, in that drive. Now the problem is, for reading, RAID 5 is very good, but for writing, it's a little bit slower because when you write data, you have to calculate that parity block, right? So you have to first read from that slice, read those two drives, put the factor in the, the new write, written block, recalculate the parity, and then write it out to uh, two of the, the three drives. And so writes are a little bit slower. And so if you're trying to do something like a, a 
exchange logs or SQL Server logs, and you're doing it right five, uh, you're going to suffer severe write performance, and the log files are essentially write only. They're, they're not read from a whole lot. So, uh, so in that situation, you want to go with a rate 10. And one thing that's not obvious to, to most people, and it's a real uh, sort of a not talked about secret in the storage world, is how full your disk array is. It has a dramatic impact on your speed. Really? How's that? Well, remember that arc? When you start out and you're first running data on the drive, you're starting out the out outermost tracks. And as long as you haven't filled it up very much, you stay on the outermost tracks. The, the linear speed of data that's passing under that head is twice as fast as it is on the inner part of the drive. And so your transfer rates are greater on the outer. Also, when you say you only have 20% of your drive used, your average seat time is going to be very low because you're not moving a whole lot. Now when you fill that drive up and you get to 97% full and you're stroking all the way in and out and your data is all over the place, what's going to happen? Your performance is going to tail off. So as you fill the drive, uh, you, uh, you suffer performance. So a lot of times you find that shiny new array and everything's great, fine and dandy, but over time the performance is going to drop off as you, as you fill it up. Manufacturers have got a long short stroke drives by saying, hey, if you need 10 terabytes of storage, we'll give you 50 terabytes of storage, and your performance is going to be great. But wait a minute, you just lost 40 terabytes of, of usable uh, storage to, to be able to get that high performance for that 10 terabytes. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Another uh, big factor is cache memory in the disk array. Some arrays have it, some arrays don't. Some arrays allow you to change the policy on a volume by volume basis. So we need write cache on this volume, but no read cache. Or we need read cache or read ahead cache on this volume. You control it. If you have a volume that you don't care about the performance on, maybe you want to turn off the cache uh, completely so it, it, it's available for your other applications. Some arrays will uh, allow you to control that uh, and manipulate that policy. So why would you virtualize storage? We talked a little about performance. But it's really the features, the advanced features, that uh, is the reason you want to spend money on centralized storage. Putting the storage directly in the service is a little cheaper. It's a little more expensive out here, so why would you do it? Well, the, the advanced features is one. Uh, first feature that, uh, that comes to mind is boot from SAN. And normally you, you serve a boot off a local storage, but these days it's very common especially in the virtualized environment, to have a server boot up the storage every number. The server comes up and it's BIOS and either has a fiber channel card in it, or these days most BIOSes have a boot over SCSI capability in it, and you boot up off the SAN, and that means your C drive or your root partition is out there in the storage area network. Why that's important is the next feature, snapshots. Snapshots will allow you to take a point in time copy of what's there. And these are not a whole copy of things, but it's a snapshot and it freezes in time, a bunch of pointers to the blocks as they were. What happens is as you write new blocks, it doesn't overwrite the old block, it writes it over here. And, and the production has a pointer to that block, whereas the snapshot has a pointer to the old block. And so you're only taking up differential. So if you have a, a 10 gig volume, and it changes 100 meg a day, then your snapshot for one day is going to take up 100 meg. So it's very space efficient, very convenient, and yet you still have a, a snapshot from last night that you could roll back to in an emergency or whatever. Some people set up their arrays and they snap their volumes, their important volumes, every five minutes. And uh, you get infected with the virus or something, you can walk back five, 10, 15 minutes, find out when you weren't infected, restore from there, and then worry about uh, sorting things out from there. 